Let's go ahead and solve a very simple series parallel circuit. Here I have a three resistor circuit. R1, 6.8K, is in series with the source. R2, which is 1K, and R3, which is 3.3K, are in parallel with each other. So there's our two components, series and parallel. The first step in the process is to find our total. And I have a three-step process to do this. The first step is to combine any series resistors. The next step is to combine any parallel resistors. And the last step is to repeat the whole process over again until we're down to a single resistor, our total. So let's go ahead now and combine our resistors. Our first step is to combine our series resistors. Now in this particular circuit here, there are no two resistors in series. So it's okay when we start doing this process to go ahead and skip a step. So we're going to go ahead and skip step one and go right to step two. Step two says to combine any parallel resistors. And in this case, we do have two parallel resistors. We have R2 and R3 in parallel. So we're going to go ahead and do our reciprocal formula to solve for R2 and R3, which is 1 over 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. R1 is 1K, so 1 exponent 3, second function, reciprocal, plus 3.3 exponent 3 reciprocal. Hit equals. And then we got to take care of that last reciprocal. And we get an R of 767.4418 ohms. And if you can, go ahead and store it in a memory location. Go ahead and redrew our circuit to show our combination resistor to 3. So we're ready for the next step. Step 3 says to repeat the whole process. So we're going to go back to step number 1. Step 1 says to combine any series resistors. So we have R1 in series with R2, 3. So we're going to go ahead and use the series formula, which is equal to R1 plus R23. R1 is 6.8K, so 6.8 exponent 3 plus, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and recall my saved value so I have an accurate reading and we get 7.567k. I've gone ahead and redrew our circuit with our, our total value. Now that we've gone ahead and found our, our total, let's go ahead and work our way backwards to find out the individual current and voltage drops of all the components. So we have VR1, IR1, VR2, IR2, and VR3 and IR3. Now what we're going to do is work our way backwards. So just looking at this circuit right here, what do we have? We have a voltage and we have a resistance. So we can find I equal to voltage divided by the resistance. So we have 5 volts divided by the resistance. Now I previously saved our resistance. And I'll go ahead and pull it up. And we get 
five microamps. So I have 660 point 725 microamps. Now I'm going to go ahead and store this value. And now we got to ask ourselves, with the circuit here, is there anything else that we can do? And in this case, we're not worrying about power, so there's nothing else we can do. So we need to go ahead and go back to our previous circuit. Now what rules did we follow? To get from here to here, we followed series rules. And what stays the same in a series circuit? Current. What we'll go ahead and do is put a V and an I by each resistor. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the current we found in the previous circuit. Now, our next step is to calculate our voltage for both of these resistors. So looking at R1, it would be equal to R1 times our current of IR1. So we're going to go ahead and put in 6.8 exponent 3 times, and since I saved my current, We'll go ahead and pull our current up, and we get a voltage of 4.493. For our combination resistor, I forgot the voltage here. It's going to be the value of R23 times the current of R23. So, I'm going to go ahead and store this voltage from R1. And now R23, because I saved it, 767 ohms times our current, and that gives us a current of 507 .068. volts. So I'm going to go ahead and put 507.068 milli and put up here 4.493 4 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and save this value. And our next step is to ask, are any of these resistors by themselves? And in this case, R1 is by itself. It is not a combination resistor. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of these values and record them in our answer key. So the voltage across R1 is 4.493 volts, and its current is 660.725 microamps. 
So now we look at this circuit, and we can go ahead and cross out R1, because we won't have to find it anymore. We already found its values. So there's nothing else to find in the circuit. So let's go ahead and go back to our original circuit. As we did with this circuit, I'm going to go ahead and put a V and an I for both resistors. Now, when we went from this circuit to this circuit, what rules did we follow? We followed parallel. So what stays the same in a parallel circuit? Voltage. So by both of these resistors, I'm going to put 507 0.068 milli. All right, so now what we can do is go ahead and calculate the individual currents for each branch. So, IR2 would be equal to VR2 divided by R2. So, VR2, we can go ahead and call it back up, which is 507 milli divided by R2, which is 1K, 1 exponent 3. And that gives us a value of 507.068 microamps. So I'm going to go ahead and store that. And now let's go ahead and calculate for R3. So IR3 would be equal to VR3 divided by R3. So VR3 was 507 milli divided by R3 which is 3.3 exponent 3 or K and that gives us a current of 153.657 microamps Now since both of these resistors are by themselves, in other words, they're not a combination resistor, I can go ahead and put their answers in my answer key. So VR2 would be 507.068 millivolts and 507.068 micro amps. VR3 507.068 millivolts and 153.657 micro amps. And that's how we solve for a series parallel circuit. Thank you.